Hello everyone, welcome to EduFunday. I am your mentor for the topic bacteria. So let us start with the introduction. Basically, जब हम बैक्टीरिया की बात करते हैं दैट मीन्स हम एक पर्टिकुलर स्टडी की बात कर रहे हैं ऑफ द माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम सो द इंट्रोडक्शन से इज दैट अ ग्रीक वर्ड दैट इज माइक्रो एन अदर दैट इज बायोज एंड लोगोज मेक्स अ सिंगल टर्म दैट इज माइक्रो बायोलॉजी दैट लीड्स टू द मीनिंग दैट इज इट इज द स्टडी ऑफ द स्मॉल लाइफ Microbiology is the branch of biology that deals with the scientific study of microorganisms or microbes. Microorganisms are the organisms that are too small to be seen with the naked eyes. That means हम naked eyes की help से microorganisms को नहीं देख सकते because they are very very small. For that we require special instruments like microscopes. Microbiology concerned with the structure, functions, classification and ways of controlling and using their activities. So जो हमारी branch है microbiology, it is basically concerned with the structure of the microorganisms, that how they look like, their functions, the classification on the body, on the basis of their body, on the basis of the function they are classified and as well as there are various ways of controlling and using their activities. So we are controlling the their activities if they are causing harm we are using their activities if they are beneficial for example in medicines so all of this comes under the field of microbiology microbes include a diverse group of simple life forms like protozoa microscopic algae and fungi बैक्टीरिया एंड वायरसेस सो जिन ऑर्गेनिजम्स को हम माइक्रोब्स बोल रहे हैं उसके अंडर कौन कौन से ऑर्गेनिजम्स आते हैं दे आर द प्रोटोजोआ दे कैन बी माइक्रोस्कोपिक एलगी दे कैन बी फंजाई सच एज यीस्ट एंड मोल्ड एज वेल एज बैक्टीरिया एंड वायरसेस द एक्सटेंसिव वर्क डन बाय लुइस पास्टर एंड रॉबर्ट कोच ड्यूरिंग द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी लेड द फाउंडेशन ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी so basically these were the first two scientists who did extensive work in this field and they laid the foundation of microbiology in 19th century louis pasteur developed the techniques of pasteurization so louis pasteur ne pasteurization ke through ek vaccine develop kara and uski wajah se unko father of बैक्टीरियोलॉजी भी बोला गया बेसिकली वॉट इज पेस्चराइजेशन इट इज द पार्शियल स्टेरलाइजेशन ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट सच एज मिल्क और वाइन टू मेक इट सेफ फॉर कंजम्पन एंड इम्प्रूव इट्स कीपिंग क्वालिटी सो अगर हम एक सिंपल सा एग्जाम्पल लें जब हम घर पे दूध लेकर आते हैं तो हम पहले उसको उबालते हैं उसे फ्रिज में स्टोर करने से पहले दैट इज नथिंग बट पेस्चराइजेशन सो दिस टेक्निक वॉज फर्स्ट डेवलप बाय लुइस पास्चर एंड अंडर हिज नेम द पेस्चराइजेशन टर्म वॉज given he is regarded as the father of bacteriology next we have the pictures of the great scientist that is louis pasteur and the robert koch then was anton van leeuwenhoek he was also an eminent scientist and he did extensive studies in the field of microbiology he discovered a world of invisible creatures he called them as animal cules so the terms that we are giving now that it is bacteria that is fungi and the micro biology as well as micro organisms these terms were not there initially so what he said he said that uh, a term uh, i am giving and it is animal cules so he gave the term animal cules to the micro organisms and he is regarded as the father of microbiology so do not get confused if i am saying father of microbiology he is anton van leeuwenhoek if i am saying the father of bacteriology it is our louis pasteur this is a picture of the microscope that was developed by leeuwenhoek and it is also called as leeuwenhoek's microscope using this he gave or you can say he discovered a world of invisible creatures so it was the first kind of microscope to study these organisms 
Next we have that bacteria are the most abundant organisms on earth and why we call them as most abundant because they can be found anywhere in the extreme situations to the normal situations. The credit for observation and description of bacteria goes to Anton van Leeuwenhoek in 1674. So he first observed the bacteria under his microscope in 1674. Later, Ehrenberg in 1829 coined the term bacteria for these microscopic creatures. So, jo Anton von Leeuwenhoek the, unhone term the animalcules. But later on, Ehrenberg was the scientist jinhone term the bacteria for the microscopic creatures that were discovered by Anton von Leeuwenhoek. In 1850s, Louis Pasteur's work showed that bacteria are chemical factories capable of bringing about significant changes in nature. So, according to his studies, he said that the bacteria are some amazing organisms that can bring significant changes in nature. And on the basis of that, he did extensive research work on bacteria and later regarded as the father of bacteriology. In 1870, Koch's experiment established their link to infectious disease called germ theory of disease. So Robert Koch ne 1870 me kuch experiments kiye aur usse unhone ye establish kiya that these microorganisms can cause infectious diseases and he gave the germ theory of disease. The study of bacteria is now recognized as bacteriology, a new branch of biology. So let us see that where are these bacteria found? They can be found in soil, they can be found in water as well as air. On or inside the organisms in a variety of foods as well as cold arctic snow. So we see that even in the drought volcanic ash, heat or hot water or the sulfur spring. Basically, he jitni bhi hamare pas locations mentioned ki gai hai, all are the extreme uh, locations in which normally life cannot exist. But the bacteria are so uh, amazing creatures that they have the capability in, of living in various situations, be it the hot spring or the sulfur spring or it can be the volcanic eruption as well as the cold arctic regions and that is why we say that these are the organism that are found most diverse in all the habitats. So bacteria are the parasites of, what do we understand by the term parasite? That means an organism that lives on the body of other organism to derive its food as well as shelter. So bacteria are acting as the parasites of the plants, the animals as well as human beings. So these are the uh, host of bacteria. There are also symbiotic bacteria, that is in plant it is rhizobium and in human intestine it is E. coli. So why we are calling them as symbiotic over here? First we said it is a parasitic organism and it can also be symbiotic. Parasitic case mein wo sirf host se apni needs ko fulfill karenge. Lekin symbiotic association mein wo host ko bhi benefit provide karte hai. For example in the plant the rhizobium bacteria on one hand, it is deriving the nutrition from the plant body. But on the other hand, what it is doing? It is providing the fixed nitrogen. It is fixing the nitrogen for the plant. And that is why it is a symbiotic relationship. If we talk human beings, ke ba, uh, case mein baat karte hai, so it is the E. coli bacteria. It is a very good bacteria for the gut of human beings. And on the other hand, human gut is providing the shelter to the bacteria and nourishment to the bacteria. So this kind of relationship is symbiotic relationship whereas they can also be the parasites and only cause harm to its host. I hope you understood it. Thanks for watching. Welcome to EduFunday. I am your mentor for the topic morphology of bacteria. So what is there in the morphology of bacteria? Basically, morphology of bacteria comprises of the size and shape. That means how the bacteria looks like and what is its size. So, let us see. The size of bacteria 
it can vary from very small or they are very small organisms basically and their size varies a lot bacteria are very small organisms which are barely visible under the light microscope majority of bacteria are in the range of 2 to 5 micrometer in length and 0.5 to 1 micrometer in breadth so this is a very very small size and it is barely visible under the light microscope and Talking about the shape of bacteria, the rigid cell wall that determines the shape of bacterial cell. So the shape can be spherical, that is the cocci, elongated or rod-like, that is the bacilli, helical rods, that is the spirulum, and comma-shaped, that is vibrios. So these cocci, bacilli, spirulum, and vibrios are the categories of the bacteria on the basis of their shape. So let us take a look at these spherical or cocci that means they are the spherical shaped bacteria and we call them as cocci bacteria for example staphylococcus so the staphylococcus bacteria is spherical then we have the rod shaped bacteria and we call them as bacilli so this is how they look like and we have the example of streptobacilli for this so streptobacilli will be the rod shaped bacteria Next, they can be comma-shaped and they are called as vibrios. For example, we have vibrio cholerae. So, the vibrio cholerae is a bacteria that is comma-shaped. And then we have helical or the spirilla. So, these are the helical-shaped, the spiral-shaped bacteria and the example for this can be the spirochetes. So, spirochetes bacteria and the term spiro is there. That means they are spiral in shape. Now, the question arises that what is meant by pleomorphic bacteria? Basically, we have seen that every bacteria is shaped and fixed. है. But some bacteria have ability hoti hai that they can change its shape. And the answer is the bacteria that keep on changing their shape are called pleomorphic bacteria. While a few are pleomorphic that keep on changing their shape depending upon the type of environment and nutrients available. Acetobacter is one such pleomorphic bacterium. So acetobacter is an example of pleomorphic bacterium ka. that means it keeps on changing its shape. And why does it change its shape? Because according to the environment and nutrients availability, they have to sustain in that environment. Some spirulum type of bacteria are flexible, referred to as spirochetes. Some bacteria are in the form of a thread or filament that is the long chains. Example, we have the Begiotoa. So these are the bacteria that is the Acetobacter, Begiotoa as well as spirochetes. Bacteria may occur individually, example spirulum, or in groups. The arrangement of bacteria in groups depends upon the adherence of the cells together after cell division. And when we are talking about the arrangement, the arrangement is more complex in case of cocci bacteria as compared to the bacilli bacteria. That means, the spiral bacteria hote hai, unme jo arrangement hoti hai, wo zyada complex hoti hai as compared to the rod shaped bacteria. Based on the number of the cells adhering together and their arrangement, the cockle forms are named as, so here are our cockle forms, that is it can be monococcus, diplococcus, tetracocci, sarcini, staphylococcus as well as streptococcus. The first one, the monococcus, that means only a single cell is there. Diplococcus, a pair of cells will be there. Then we have the tetracocci, of course it says the four cells and then the streptococcus that means a linear chain of cells in a single row. Then we have the last that is the staphylococci, they are irregular in arrangement and sarcini, they will be the cells that are arranged in the cubes of eight. So these are the various kind of arrangements of the caucus that we see in case of these bacteria. So let us see their structures. Here we have the 
monococcus, diplococcus, tetrococcus as well as the streptococcus bacteria. In this we can see the single uh, cocci, then we have the diplococcus, we have the tetrococcus as well as streptococcus. So streptococcus may have a linear chain. Here we have the sarsini as well as the staphylococci. In sarsini we are seeing a cube like structure and this cube is made up of eight Caucus, so it is forming a structure that is called as sarsini and then in staphylococcus the arrangement is absolutely irregular. So these are the different kind of bacteria. The bacillus form exists as first one we have the monobacillus. It can be diplobacillus as well as the streptobacillus. So let us see what are they. In case of monobacillus, a single elongated cell is there. In case of diplobacillus, paired cells of bacilli are there. Then the streptobacillus, chains of bacilli appearing like straws. So here we see the various structures, the monobacillus, the diplobacilli and streptobacilli. So in diplo, there are two and in strepto, there is a chain of these cylindrical units or we can say the rod like units and they are in a form of chain and it is the streptobacillus. Now we see that the spiral forms may be the vibroid, the cell having less than one complete twist. It can be spirulum in which the cells have more than one complete twist, a distinct helical shape is formed or it can be spirochete that is the slender long and corkscrew shaped. So let us see these structures. The first one is vibroid. So we can see they are comma shaped and it is only a single unit of spiral. That means it is not forming one complete twist. Next we have the spirulum. Here you can clearly see that a twist is being formed more and more and that is the spirulum bacteria. And then we have the spirochete in which a long corkscrew shape is formed. That means the spiral is continuing more and more. So these are the various kind of spiral bacteria. I hope you understood the topic. Thanks for watching.